welcome to this week's piece. So, you guys know I backed out on my seascape the last time I wanted to do one. And I was scouring the interwebs for another piece to do it on, and then I realized I've got this sleigh bed in my shop. And I was just going to turn this into a bench, but I think it will be a lovely bed. Because it is one. <laughs> so this had kind of that trim around it that looks a bit like a frame. So I just thought this would be a good try it out time. Something to use that I wasn't terribly fond of. So yeah, started with giving it a good cleaning and then I gave it a scuff sand. Um, I didn't want to go too deep in the sand because it's mahogany and I didn't want it to bleed through. Not that it would matter too much because we're going a dark paint route, so not a huge deal. But this thing had tons and tons of scratches and gouges in it. So I had to fill all those. You'll notice I didn't fill any in the little framed area. That's because I'm gonna actually help that wood out a little bit later. But everything else is getting a paint job, so it didn't matter too much to just give it a fill. Um, the inner section where I'm going to do the painting, I went over it in blackboard, and that's because I need a black base, and then everything else will get two coats of Iron Gate. Iron Gate is just the dark gray. So I show doing one coat of the blackboard here, which is all that I did, but the Iron Gate did get two coats. I only show one because you guys know it's boring to just paint a solid, solid color. Now before I start painting, um, I like to start with a base of poly over the top because I know that I'm going to make mistakes somewhere and I want to just make sure if something bad happens I can kind of go back without going all the way back. So I let that sit overnight and then I'm using this line of tape here just to be a horizon line. And then I'll start with my clear glaze mixed with the black just to give a wet base to work on. And then you'll notice I'm only doing the top bits because this is all water-based stuff. It dries fairly quickly, so I don't want to do the entire top. I just want to do what I'm capable of working in. So I've got just a few colors that are kind of dark, stormy, cloudy sky colors. I swirl them in, and then I just take a blending brush and kind of smooth them out and make them look a little foggy-ish. And then I can add the same glaze and black paint to the bottom and start doing the waves. Now clouds are so easy, you literally swirl them on and then kind of brush them out almost. I've never done ocean waves before and these were so hard for me. So you'll see this kind of starting out in this way and then as I go, this, they will completely change because I didn't like it, I didn't think it looked good and I just kind of kept playing with things until I felt like they were something that I could look at and not be sad about. Um, so this portion is where I'm trying to do like a rollover wave. It's fine. I mean, it, it took a while. And that's kind of the bonus of this is if you get kind of a basic shape in outline, you can almost keep adding paint and building to it instead of starting all the way over. Now you totally could start all the way over and that would be fine, but I found in doing this that if I just kind of kept going with it, I would get some place that I liked by the end of it. Again, I'm not teaching any of this because I don't know what I'm doing. Um, usually they're like my other three paintings that I did, I could kind of follow along. Like the first painting I followed along a Bob Ross tutorial and it was awesome and I loved it and it was super fun and it turned out really well. And then the second one, like I could just kind of veer more and more the other two that I did. But this one, I didn't have anything to follow really. He has like two that I, I found helpful, but it didn't really work that well with this kind of paint. So I don't know. It just, it was hard. It was hard. Um, and then I had this big blank spot. So I was like, oh, I'll do a ship. I, I don't know how to do ships. So um, I found one that was kind of the angle of a ship that I wanted and I 
looked at that picture and tried to paint it. I just kind of did a basic outline of it in a dark color. That's the ship right there. And it looks nothing like that one because that person's an actual artist. But I just kind of did the basic outline of it and kept adding and hoping for the best. Now, this ship took me probably longer than anything else. So the waves and everything, even though I went back and did the waves, they weren't as hard as on the footboard. So that was nice to know that just after practicing on the headboard, the footboard was quite a bit easier and went a bit faster. Okay, so I'm just gonna super speed through the rest of the ship because like I said, I was just kind of adding things as I went and hoping for the best, which is mostly just how I do my paintings anyways. Now this is the part where the water started feeling better to me because I was changing up the way I was doing the waves and it really really helped. So I would add a bit more of the glaze and do the colors and just kind of worked in layers instead of just trying to get them all done. So this part was actually fun and I was starting to kind of get a feel for it if you know what I mean. So everything changed in the waves and you can see it's starting to kind of come together just a little better than what it initially looked like. Now the one thing I didn't like was how I had those waves meeting there like pushing up against each other. I knew I wanted that to be there but it looked strange because obviously I needed something on the left side to make the water do that so I just I wasn't sure what I was gonna do but I liked this but I hated the way that it looked just like it shouldn't be there. So while I'm doing this, I'm kind of deciding like here, how I wanted to make it look, how, like how I could make this make sense. This wasn't it. At this point I was finishing up touch ups and everything and adding a few stars and the breaks in the clouds and just getting little extra bits. I dried it and then polyed it because I liked where it was at. Again, I knew I wasn't done, but just in case I hated what I did next, it was protected. So I added kind of just like a barrier here, maybe some rocks or something. I didn't know where I was going, but I just started playing with it and I really like how it ended up 
and it's just really scary to put something on there. So again, that's why I put the poly down, just in case I hated it, I could totally wipe it off and start over. And you know I can't finish a piece without doing a bit of gilding. So I've mixed up a gold that I will like. I've got three different, I've got some gold, some copper, and some silver in here. Um, and then just a tiny bit of poly. Now if you do a lot of poly, you can do a wash with this or, I mean you've seen me use this stuff in numerous ways. But this I want a really bold gilded look, so a very small amount of poly. And I'm just using a detail brush and I'm going to go around all of the edges of the frame and just any of the accent pieces. I'm highlighting all of those. Then I did go through and sealed the entire piece with poly with the exception of the wooden frame area. On the framed area, I'm taking some 320 sandpaper. I wanted this to be super, super fine because I'm not trying to get it all the way sanded back to anything. I'm just trying to smooth it out and give me a good surface to work with and then clear off the sanding dust. And then I can go in with my beeswax and give it a good polish. And this stuff just works so amazingly well. I put it on with a bit of very, very fine steel wool. And you can see it just brings the wood back to life. And it also protects it and gives it just the most lovely, lovely sheen. And then of course I will take this same stuff on the same pad and I will go over all of the paint as well. And this will kind of help tone everything and give it all the same sheen and it also minimizes some of your brush strokes too if that's an issue that you're having. Oh and also adds extra protection because I find that anytime you do wax over poly it just adds an extra barrier for spills and things like that to have to get through so I highly recommend waxing over over poly I'll let this sit and then I can go back and just buff it out with a cloth and then we're finished oh hi Taryn here with elegant upgrades and we've got our finished piece so I wow this was such a hard one. 
Um, you guys know that I don't really know what I'm doing when it comes to painting. I have just been kind of hoping for the best as I go and things have been turning out well and that's really fun for me because it's just blowing my mind in every single way. So I, you know I wanted to do seascapes. I did a whole thing about that. I chickened out on the last time I was going to attempt it. Just totally chickened out. Couldn't do it. So I was like, oh, well, I was going through my stash because I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it. I'm going to find something to do it on. And I was searching and searching and searching. And then I was like, you know what? I've got this bed here. I've been meaning to turn it into a bench. I have several of them because they store nicely. Um, and I was like, you know, it actually looks like it has a frame already, kind of like the mountainscape. I'm like, this will be perfect. I'll do it on this and it'll be fine. And then if I mess it up, I mess it up. And you guys know that I'm pro messing up. If you have a mistake, it's just paint. We can fix it and start all over. It's not a big deal. Whew. Little did I know. Okay, here's a little thing. On the other, I've done three paintings total. <laughs> and they're all landscapes and they've turned out just better than I ever could have hoped for considering I don't know what I'm doing. But they look a little bit realistic. And they took about two hours. You know, like Bob Ross does his things in 30 minutes. They take me about two hours to get the whole thing done. This took me so many hours. I can't tell you, it was so hard. And I just had to keep trying it. I, the actual waves and everything, this one went a lot faster because I had already done this one because this was the main one that I was practicing on. That's another thing. I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, it'll be fine because it's, you know, it's like essentially the same thing. No. On a dresser, I'm doing one painting. And in this one, I had to do two paintings. Didn't think that through. And also, I needed something else in here besides just water. So I was like, I'll paint a ship. I don't know how to paint ships. Again, don't know what I was thinking just absurd so I tried my best it's fine it, I feel like it looks like an illustration rather than like my landscape ones that have turned out so well I feel like it just looks like it belongs in a storybook which is great considering it's the first time I've ever done it I just I didn't know what I was gonna do and I just kept I just kept at it and I just kept adding layers and layers and you'll kind of see with the boat well you saw it with the boat that it just kind of built up with different because I yeah I didn't know I mean I had nothing to follow you guys know that previously I would like follow a Bob Ross tutorial and kind of make changes where I wanted them I didn't have that with this I was just trying my best <laughs> and so I'm I'm pretty pleased with how it came out considering I've never done it before it's incredibly hard to those people who do any types of paintings I just admire you so much because it's so difficult this was anyways and I well so I'm pleased we'll see we'll see how it does the paintings like this uh, usually take quite a bit longer to sell than the regular pieces of furniture so I'm throwing that out there for those of you who are interested in giving this a try but I think you can ask for a bit higher price for those um, it will definitely get listed on Etsy because it's that type of piece but yeah this is a tough one. Very tough. So thank you so much for following along. Thank you to all the new subscribers. I'm just so blown away this last two weeks. I, I don't even, you guys are just amazing and incredible and I adore you so much. I know that I say that. I will continue to say it because I'm just blown away. We're almost coming up on 10K. I, 10,000 humans and I just can't. You guys are so awesome. So thank you so much. As always, like, subscribe, and I love all your comments, as you know. Um, sign up for the memberships if you want to, just because I, you know, it's easier to go more in-depth about the businessy type stuff with you guys. But don't if you don't want to. Uh, I'll see you guys next week and uh, get you some pictures.